Hello, world. Patricia O'Connor and Frida Reba Darcy here today on the bonsai balcony. It is not our typical blue day. It is an overcast day. Uh, it's cloudy. It's cool. It's breezy. And Frida and I are, uh, for the most part, except for I just opened up the doors to do this video, have been hanging out and being all snuggly because that's what kind of, it's kind of a hot cocoa kind of day today uh, in Alameda, California. Um, but it is also a good time to fall back. It's not fall, it's spring. But to fall back and do a little, a little bit of catch up. A little bit of review, show uh, where we are on uh, our placement of our trees, where our trees are in their development, and uh, how things are looking that we've just recently worked on, and what's basically going on with them. So it's it's a, um, a good day to catch up on our balcony. Uh, we'll start. We'll start with these guys. These are our three bald cypress trees. We, I'm on a, my deal with these guys are, they are pre-bonsai. We've got a few years to go until the trunk chops that have happened on all three of them will uh, turn into taper. All of those tree tops you see sticking up are all much skinnier than their fat bases. And when those tops become kind of funnels all the way down into those bottom shapes will basically be pulling into port then at that point uh what i think going in that i will do is take a long blade and cut down into here separating this tree from this one cut down in to there, separating this tree from this one. And what I'm talking about doing is, is whereas my 65 year old self would not be able to lift up this pot, turn it on its side, pull out those three trees, comb back the roots, cut back the roots, and then go back into a bonsai pot whenever time permits. I think I would be able to separate that grouping into three separate trees and lift those individually out, dress them, their roots, also adjust their height. Those trees were planted at different heights. The center one, its height is dictated by its buttress, uh, but it had a large square that encompassed more space then the other two were going to be allowed to give it. So that square that it is takes up actually goes to this one and to this one, and their buttresses would be below that square. So I sunk those two guys farther down in the pot. They get to come up. Maybe. Maybe they get to come up. Maybe not. Maybe once I get underneath there, I see that I've... Um, I've lost buttressing to a cataclysm of, of out roots that can't really be cleaned up. Either way, uh, that will allow me to separate the three trees, bring them up individually, set them set uh, one in water when it gets ready to go into the next pot, then pull up the next one, do it, and then pull up the third one, get its roots ready, and then go back in and then go back in when it comes time to do that. Now that's years from now. I'm, I'm speaking a couple of years into the future. In the meantime, what our regimen is, is to allow these guys to, to blow out every spring and every summer and grow as much good foliage, bad foliage, all the, uh, all the foliage, because we're gonna turn all of that foliage into photosynthesis. We're gonna turn all of that photosynthesis into energy. We're going to turn all that energy into root mass. We're going to turn all that root mass into more foliage, which is how we keep the machine running. And um, it was just a couple of years ago 
but this was a tiny stick about this big and um you know we're we're growing our way towards it now these guys will all the foliage will turn this color this little kind of rusty color red in fall and in winter and when that happens i sit back and look at it and enjoy it as do we all i think it's just a beautiful look but then after that, it's gone. There's not going to be any more photosynthesis. There's no need in having those around. Um, so at that point, we can defoliate the tree if we want to, um, or we can just leave it. But it, that is usually the time in which I go back and I cut back all of the branches that will not be a part of the final design. And I prune back the branches that will be a part of its final design. The ones that won't be, we get rid of completely. The ones that will be, usually we want to turn our twos into fours or fours into eights. And so that's how we do that. We look at a branch that we cut back last year. We cut it here and then we got these two guys. So next winter, this coming uh, beginning of winter into fall, We'll clip these two guys back, not exactly the same, at a little different levels, lengths, um, so that it doesn't look just totally uniform. And then we'll start our next round of twos that way, it times the whole tree. So that's kind of the, the secret to that guy. Um, I guess we could, you were just gonna kind of skip around. We have got ourselves uh, an air layer going with this trident maple. It looks like it needs water. Whenever the tops look like this, that's usually a sign that I need to water, but the soil looks really, looks still pretty wet right now. Kind of conflicting, but uh, the conflicting signal is probably due to wind. It's quite breezy today. Everybody looks watered. Let me just tell you, it hadn't been. Um, Mixed signal day means this. One, our temperatures are so cool that the amount of water I gave everybody yesterday, still there. But the amount of uh, wind we are getting should be taxing them some, some. So uh, I'm kind of just standing back. Our ponderosas out here and our little pines on the rail they're looking a little drier than the ones closer in because they're exposed to more wind. But um, they look like they look like they could still go a minute. Even my 17 year from seed, which generally goes through its water pretty quickly, I think I can wait. Um, good to see my little mames down there. Those guys need water. They do. I'll come back through here after we get through shooting and I'll water these guys and I'll probably water. This is our cork bark. I think you can probably see that it is really flushing out quite a bit. I mean, just like a whole lot. Uh, loving this, loving, loving, loving this. The way it's looking right now is really good. Uh, I have a spider that a leaf hopper. I've seen leaf hoppers, and I always refer to leaf hoppers as these little spiders that live on your. They can live under trees and kill other insects. They're welcome. I've heard other people call something leaf hoppers that look like something out of Alien. No, that's not. Leaf hoppers are my uh, little loving phrase I give to the spiders that I don't want to pour neem on or insect stuff on. So, yeah. Cypress tree was just being grabby with the USB cables on the camera, so it's a good thing we didn't just lose lose signal. Um, here's a quick look at uh, our at our pines. One of our racks of pines. They are looking so lush. Um, it's about time for us to go through and selecting some of these to take to the next level. Um, pretty excited about that, in fact. And I will show you these two, is this tray back here as well. These are the ones that we started, or these are the ones that we started this past spring. And they're coming along, except this one. This one looks oddly out of place. Um, but they're coming along nicely. So we're pretty tickled with that. 
I'm already starting to see some of the um, some of the damage from watering the leaves on my maples. It's really, really hard for me to water this correctly, to get in here with a wand and water all the individual trees. When I try to do that over the course of a year, sometimes I'll lose one. When I water the foliage, I'll lose the foliage to uh, water damage and or powdery mildew. So a lot of times uh, after I know that I've just dang good and well hosed down the foliage, I'll go back over it with this and hose it down proper a second time. Just to make sure it's good and wet. Why would I do that? Because this is soapy water. That way at least the water the last bit of water that we left on there will not be something that is uh, conducive to powdery mildew. It would kill powdery mildew, not feed powdery mildew. So uh, our Kodaha maple forest is doing good. Our uh, pointing at the light is not very pro-light, but a quick shot at our original bonsai, that little, that little uh, wisteria up there started the show, uh, pan down. A uh, quick look at our Dawn Redwood. It is busting out with a lot of stuff. Uh, if I prune that back, it would be less impressive. But right now with all of that foliage and that huge honking truck trunk, it looks pretty cool. I, I, I say good, good going there, tree. Uh, and then getting a, a bigger back look at the cork bark oak. Um, I'm really pleased with it in a couple of weeks I will go back through and clip our tips again uh, I only see a couple that are ready for that now I will suspect there will be more later the next warming spell we'll probably see another huge you know flush and flurry of of the stuffs so um yeah good general look at that Okay, this would be, so quick look at the ponderosas out. They are not needing water. I did a little show of those in the, at the beginning of the video. They're not needing water, uh, but they're almost dry. Normally on a sunny day, all of these guys